this video, I want to talk about some of the properties of rings. Let's let A be any ring. By the definition of a ring, A with just addition does form an abelian group. Therefore, everything we know about abelian groups applies to this set A under addition. It is important to remember that A with addition is an abelian group in additive notation, so before we apply any theorems about groups to this set A, these theorems must be translated into additive notation. A few of the basics. We have our cancellation law that says A plus B equal to A plus C implies B is equal to C. The inverse property that A plus B equal to zero implies A is equal to negative B and B is equal to negative A. We also have that negative A plus B is negative A plus negative B and negative negative A is equal to A. So let's look at a few other properties of rings. The first thing I want to show, let's let A be any element of my ring A, then A times zero is zero and zero times A is zero where zero is my additive identity element. We start by using the fact that AA plus zero is equal to AA. This is due to just the definition of the additive identity. Well, since A plus zero is the same thing as A, I can write this as A times A plus zero. Distributive property tells me this is AA plus A zero. So now I have that AA plus zero is equal to AA plus A zero. I previously talked about how I have the cancellation property, so I have this is zero equal to A zero. And so I have shown in this case the first part. Similarly, if we write this here as a plus zero times a, we would get the other direction. The second property, let's let a and b be elements of my ring a. Then we have the a times negative b is negative ab, and negative a times b is negative ab. Let's start with this a times negative b and look at a times negative b plus ab. I can use my distributive property to factor out an a, and that gives me a times negative b plus b. Well, negative b plus b is zero, and I just showed that a times zero is zero. So now I have a times negative b plus a b is equal to zero, and by the second condition that I had when I was relating this to groups, my identity property, that tells me that a minus b is equal to negative a b. And similarly, we can get this second condition. The final thing I wanna prove right now, let's let a b be elements of my ring a, then negative a negative b is equal to a b. So multiplying by two negatives makes a positive. Well, we have negative A times negative B using the thing I just proved, that's negative A times negative B. And using that property again, negative, negative AB. And I've already talked about how a double negative is a positive, so this would just be AB.